Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about a use case which we have and we're going to leverage um, LLMs and knowledge graphs. So our use case is very simple as you can see on the screen. You are a real estate investor and you want to do property analysis using LLMs and knowledge graphs. Uh, the first thing first, you need the data for it. So I scraped um, the entire Zillow library and I saved it in my Neo4j uh, database graph and I have been collecting it for like past um, a year or so, but I'm, I'm for this use case, I have taken just a sample set of uh, the listings which have come up in the last, uh, I would say, um, 15 days. Um, and I have not deleted the listings which have uh, gone pending. So it might, the data might have some noise and I have not run it through cleaning processes. So, but we will see how LMs are um, helping us out. So I have almost at 6,000 nodes. Our nodes consist of uh, the brokers, um, basically who, uh, the realtors, the city listing rental rental listing states a street uh, on which the, the the listing is either list uh, either the main listing or the rental listing and the zip code so i live in cincinnati area and cincinnati touches the border of um, all the three states which are important to me indiana ohio and kentucky um, and then we have multiple zip codes which are part of it and if you look at the zip codes each zip code would be tied with some uh, property which is out there and this whenever you open these properties it will become like a huge thousands and thousands of nodes are how connected with this uh, city of Cincinnati. And then there are uh, some other cities as well um, over here, like, oops, this is zip code. And then, so you can see there's, there's a huge data. And as a real estate investor, I don't know how to query all this data. So that's where we're gonna leverage uh, our LLM mob, uh, our LLMs. And um, and our Langchain um, module to query a database. So the first thing first, we'll import a bunch of libraries. Um, the first li the important library over here is from Langchain community import Neo4j graph, which will give us um, connectivity to uh, to this this graph, which is compatible with the, our graph cipher QA chain. So graph cipher, what so what does graph cipher mean? So graph cipher is gonna chain is a module in which anytime you write a query, it's going to create a cipher code and query the graph database. Over here, you can see graph cipher QA chain from LLM. It's taking cipher LLM, QA LLM. You can have cipher LLM as different, QA LLM as different. Uh, in this case, if you want to um, go for like something Olama kind of model because of your QA LLM, your QA could be different than your cipher LLM then you can do it or, or vice versa. So it gives you a flexibility over there. <clears throat> and let's give it a model name over here as GPT-4 as well. And then we will provide graph, which we created over here. It's a graph. It's very important. And I'm going to talk to you about the graph uh, as well, like how LLM understands graph. You want it verbose, return intermediate steps as true. Yes. So the first thing you might ask, how would an LLM know about the graph? So whenever you do graph, we have created this graph connection and we do graph.schema. We will get list of all the things. As I was talking about, I'm getting list of, um, we have nodes like listing, we have nodes like um, other things like rental listing, and then what the connections are. So this is a connection of this particular node is in part of the city of Hamilton. So the rental city is Hamilton, rental state is Ohio, and since it's a rental listing, if it's a regular listing like this, then it would have something similar, like street is this, state is this, city is this, X, Y, Z. So behind the scenes, LLM is gonna use this graph.schema uh, property and understand what all nodes are their relationships are there and what are the properties of these nodes and relationships are. So let's give it a simple uh, query. How many listings are in zip code 45205? And once you run this, you can see it's going to create a cipher query, which can just, we can just directly copy and paste it and paste it in a new forward. Eh? It says there are 48 number of listings. And that's why it says it's it, there's a 48 number of uh, listings over here. Let's give it a much more um, complex uh, problem to solve. What is the most expensive home in the city of Cincinnati? If you run this, you can see that 
it is giving us a result back for this and if we want to drill down to the result in much more plain english it also gives us result the most expensive home in the city of cincinnati is located at 9575 canning road um and it's all um public data so no problem in that and which is listed for 5.98 million now we want to give it much more um kind of a chat like qa response chain of thought kind of things so first thing first we will need to provide it the uh, the, the past chat history so below is the response from past chat history i'm i'm returning the result to a string because that's a dictionary converting into a string and attaching it then i'm writing some rules over here which we might need and you, you will see why we need it the find the result for and this is the new query how many bedrooms does it have so how many bedroom does this particular home have that's what we are asking our llms so it says the bedroom is actually coming as none so let's go and look at the query in our neo4j and let's see if it's the case so as we can see the bedrooms are actually coming at as null and but if I change instead of bedrooms all this HPD data to beds and then run the query it's gonna give me a result as 8 so there is some level of uh, data discrepancy and now we will write the rule whenever you are being asked for bedrooms query for beds now let's run and see this now you can see that it is able to give us beds as eight so we are able to build our chain of thoughts uh, using uh, these contexts and these rules uh, th but the ideal way would be that we clean our data and then uh, we build uh, so that we don't have to build these rules but i just wanted to show you how you can also uh, do some level of em you know data cleaning or giving it right instructions and then you can get to the right answers over here the second step which would be is that um, since we are already getting a response back from uh, um, our, our first um, our first query we would like uh, LLM to query this module itself instead of going all the way to uh, Neo4j writing cipher query going all the way to Neo4j and giving us a result back because this live somewhere in this JSON because this is the response back which is we are getting. So we will um, build something called the LLM routes in next video, which will decide or uh, should I go and look at the previous context or should I go and query something new. So stay tuned for that video as well.